Welcome back. You're still watching Business Incorporated. Uh, in recent years, there has been increased regulatory scrutiny of global supply chains, especially those involving uh, commodities producing emerging markets like Africa. And this is putting a spotlight on West Africa's producers and traders of oil, gas, cocoa, coffee, and palm oil. Moves are underway by the EU and U.S. government to improve scrutiny and boost transparency in the supply chain. What could this mean for West Africa? Sir George, the Chief Narrative Officer at Cleo's Advisory, joins us to provide answers to this and more. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us, Ted. It's, it's great to, to have you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So first off, how transparent are, are commodity value chains in the region? Well, I think the problem is not at all. We have billions of dollars worth of goods and commodities and millions of people involved in the value chains in West Africa, and most of it is very fragmented. So there are some big companies which have integrated value chains and they can really see what's going through them. But even if you take the case of cocoa, somewhere like Cote d'Ivoire, uh, over half the cocoa is bought by individual middlemen and aggregated. Most people doesn't know where it comes from. And that means monitoring things like forestry protection, child labor, forced labor is very, very poor. And so, you know, there really needs to be a sea change in the way that some of these um, supply chains are managed in Africa. Otherwise, they won't be able to trade internationally. So what are the, the EU and the U.S. government proposing, and how could this affect West African traders? Well, it's pretty radical what they're proposing on paper. Of course, in practice, will be different. But the European Parliament voted in March for the Commission to produce a law which would basically require everyone to fully monitor their supply chain. And there must not be any child labor or any impact on um, uh, human rights abuse or environmental damage. And then the U.S. Customs and Border Protection have introduced legislation that says no goods can pass the U.S. border if it involves forced labor. So if you look at West Africa, uh, commodity sectors like cocoa, palm oil, there's a lot of concerns about um, uh, these issues in those sectors. And they could be affected, those flows going into Europe and North America. Well, talking about child labor, but what needs to be done to ensure you know, West African can remain part of international supply chains because it's not easy to actually monitor how they uh, choose their, their workers at this point. Absolutely. Uh, it's so fragmented, the value chain. I think tech is the key, technology. Um, a techno if you're trying to monitor things, you want to have as little human involvement as possible. But if you can be using satellite data, drone data, data from mobile phones and information collected that way, and analytics, you can really see where the problems are and then address them at that particular point. But I think also one of the real key things here is cross-border value chains. It ties into the whole thing with the Africa continental free trade area. But if you have cross-border value chains, you can and set standards which go along the whole value chain. And that is what actually stamps out the problems. We have some value chains which are perfect right up to the point when you get the, uh, uh, the produce from the market. So if we can get right back to the tree itself, that's why I think across the borders as well, there is a chance for proper transparency in these value chains. Right, but how could this affect efforts to integrate West Africa into AFTA? Well, I think it, there is definitely going to be a big problem there um, if it's seen that, for example, someone's trying to extend a value chain run by an international company into another country where, let's say, there are concerns over deforestation or forced labor. So it really does mean that there's going to have to be a lot of thinking about how we link this all up. But there are so many of the commodities that West Africa produces. It's minerals, but particularly soft commodities, which are needed by the international market. And there's a lot more opportunity to get value out of them. For me, the real bonus that comes with transparency is you know who it is who's working the value chain. And that gives you a much better chance that West Africans will get paid and get a lot more value out of their commodities than just exporting them raw. Well, transparency is actually key. Anyway, Ted, uh, thank you so much for your time today and do enjoy your weekend. Thanks very much. It's good to be back. Thank you.